I started working as a kitchen hand, uh, washing dishes and things in a few different restaurants and a few different places um, until I worked hard enough that somebody offered me an apprenticeship. Look, one thing I'll, I'll admit tentatively, the one thing that I do love about it, I, lo I actually love the ruthlessness of the industry. Like, I, I love the way you just can't let up for a minute, you know. It, it's something that really drives me forward and keeps me going day to day. It's, uh, it's kind of, I guess I'm a bit like an adrenaline junkie in a way. You know, I, I love the <laughs> adrenaline, I get off on it, you know. It's, um, it's something that I find, uh, I guess it really keeps my passion going. Alright, so this is Ben from Gerard's and he's just going to break down the dish that he did for the night. Cool, so the first thing we're going to do before we get started on anything else um, for the time, so this is the pork of the parfait. So the dish that we're doing, um, the reason I did it and everything goes into it is um, I wanted to create a dish. We got these beautiful suckling pigs that are reared by the Schultz family on their farm. Um, they're reared just for us. So what I wanted to do was do a dish that kind of encapsulated everything from their farm specifically. So. Um, all the elements that were on the plate that had anything to do with the meat factor um, were all from that pig. So we, we take everything from the pig. Uh, from the blood, we make a blood sausage from the blood of the suckling pig, um, which gets turned into like a blood pudding, a caramelised blood pudding that goes on there. Um, the livers from the suckling pig um, get made into a suckling pig liver parfait. And the thing that's amazing about suckling pig is the fact that it's been feeding on mother's milk, you know. So I wanted to turn that on its head and take it a step further and go, well, what if we took the milk from the mother that the pig's been feeding on and then um, when we get the pork in here to, to cook it in its mother's milk to kind of enhance that richness to take it further. So that was the concept that we did. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do now is we'll make the um, suckling pig liver parfait. And we're just going to let that reduce right down so the onions are going to cook as it's coming down and they're going to release all the natural sweetness of their own. Yep, so these are the livers from the suckling pigs. And then we're going to add to that just four eggs and a couple of yolks. Right, so once that's all mixed together nicely, all we're going to do, um, we're just going to sit it up above the cooktop here, just where it's nice and warm and let that just warm gently up there. So it's important in the final product with this that we have everything at the same temperature. So we want them all to be at a similar temperature when we blend them together so that it emulsifies really well. All right, so from this pig, the way that we're gonna break it down um, so that we use every part of it, we'll take the leg away from the back, then the leg and the rump um, we'll use to make a sausage to go back into the loin, which is this part. So you get the loin of the pig up here and then the belly flap that will separate away from the loin. Um, so this comes together as one whole. And then the sausage that we make from the leg, we're going to wrap it back inside that to make like a valentine uh, from the pig, that's that part. And then we come into this section here, we'll take the rack, so um, you know, you get a really nice part of the back of the loin continue, continuing up with the bones on there. So we'll, we'll take that together um, um, to form that part. Uh, the shoulder from here, so we'll take that shoulder off and then keep it whole. And then from there, that the rack and the valentine will be put into the mother's milk and then cooked um, in a bag in milk um, very slowly over um, at a low temperature over a long period of time. Um, the neck and the head then get turned into the sauce to go with it. So um, you need that for the collagen that goes into the sauce so that you have a really thick, um, really textured sauce, you know, it gets that really nice gelatinous, yeah, yeah so like a sticky mouthfeel. So there are all those parts that go into there. So pretty much nothing from this animal goes to waste. What are your proudest moments? Like, what do you find your biggest achievements? Look, the, success, the success of Gerard's Bistro is definitely one of my biggest achievements. Um, it's something, the concept was something that I built from the ground up um, with the other owners. So it's something that we, um, it was very unique and specific to a time. We weren't trying to be something that somebody else was already doing. We just wanted to do what we wanted to do and we wanted to do it in our own way. And we wanted it to be something that we love and are proud of and it's certainly worked out that way in the end. So the next stage we're gonna go with from here, um, aside from the sausage, so this is the mother's milk that um, the pigs have been producing, so. It's, it's such not. a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just roll with it? Yeah, okay. Um, look, it, it tastes very similar to regular milk. Um, the only difference is it's got a little bit more richness to it, and it's got a bit of an earthy mushroom sort of characteristic that comes through, um, not in an unpleasant way, it's in a really good way. So the next thing we're gonna do from these is we're just gonna season Season the flesh on these really nicely and then the skin to a degree as well. And just let them sit 
and the same with the racks. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to vac these in bags. There you go, you can have the shoulder. Plate the rack. Just a bit of that milk in there. And where would you like Brisbane's food scene to head? I'd, I'd like to see Queensland produce to be more celebrated in Queensland, to see a more specific local scene. Um, local producers that are doing great things that should be supported more across the board and, and really propped up and elevated. And then in, in the long term, we can have a, a food scene that's very specific to us and, and a food style that's specific to Queensland. Right, so the next thing we're gonna do is make this balantine to go through. So that's the loin and just the belly flap that comes off the pork. So what we're gonna do, that's the legs that we've taken from one prior. Um, and the cheeks and we've just minced that down so a rough mince. Um, so what we're going to add to that flavour is these are just some shallots that we've comfied off. So um, what we use here, we use um, flavoured oils for seasoning quite a lot. So we make a shallot oil and a garlic oil and a few different things because they, they can add seasoning to a dish instead of salt, you know, salt and pepper are regular seasonings. But shallot oil and garlic oil can add like a really nice natural sweetness to counterbalance yeah. some things that are overly done other ways. So, something we use and then this is a spice blend that we use called Advia so this is a Persian spice blend yeah if you smell it smells incredible it smells amazing. I can smell it. so in here we got uh, there's rose petals um, dried black lime uh, turmeric coriander cumin cloves um, you know really kind of heady floral sort of spices I guess to go in there and this is a spice mix that's used in Persia quite heavily so um, we're just gonna add those and some salt So the next thing we're going to do is just take some of it. We're just going to set it in here next to this. It's important when you're making these sausage sort of mixes, you want to keep everything really cold. Just make sure it's all really fresh in the fridge and ice cold, which is why the shallots we have them pre-done. Um, otherwise what will happen is you'll end up with a, a sausage meat that doesn't hold together. Once you cook it, it'll separate out and the waters will come from it, the liquids. So the idea being we're just going to bring this around and you want it just kind of to overlap ever so slightly on the other side, so something like that, bring it together in a way that works, and we're just going to drop it on there. Fold it over, and then nice and tight. So the next step from there is we'll just put that into a cryvat bag as well, just to cover off, make sure it doesn't get in. Right, so as this is starting to come down, you can see that amount of um, Pedro Jimenez that we had in there is pretty much all but almost reduced down. So what we'll do is we'll just leave that for another couple of minutes. But the last stage, which is quite important that we'll add to it, is we're just gonna add this thyme to it. But it's important you don't add it in the early stages because you just lose all the beautiful freshness that you get from it. Like for me with herbs, it's all about freshness. It's about the oils, it's about everything working well together. So if you add it too early, it's just gonna cook everything down and you're not gonna get that beautiful freshness from it. So you add it in the last stage, and then just let that infuse. So the next thing we're gonna do from here, um, this is something we pre-made from the blood of the pigs. So um, with blood, you don't really wanna mess around with it. So when it comes in fresh straight away, we, we work with it immediately. So hence, I don't have the fresh blood to work with today with you, but um, basically what we did, we mixed this together with some of the meat and the skin from the jowl, which yep. we cooked down to make gelatinous. We just cooked it in a bag sous vide. Uh, we mixed it together with the blood with a little bit of cooked broken down rice just to absorb. Um, and some spices in there as well. What we're gonna do with this is we actually wanna get a really nice caramelized rich flavor from this just to carry everything else through. So these now, we're just gonna put it onto the stove and just get the heat up there and get it all really nice and caramelized. So what we're gonna do is just track in so an equal weight of what we had of the blood sausage, an equal weight of red wine. Just let that kind of separate all the stuff off the bottom, bring it all up, and then we're gonna reduce it down until there's nothing left. So we're gonna take it back down to a glaze. And what's your advice or top tips for the chefs out there? I guess my top tips would be, um, as a young chef coming out into the industry, um, you know, just be disciplined, be, have an open mind while you're working through. Um, you know, watch everybody and see what they're doing and, and the different chefs that you're working with. You know, if you see something that one chef's doing that's amazing and another chef is doing, don't just be told that this is the way it is. But form your own opinion and, and really take the best of everyone that you can see around you and then pull that best together to make something that works for yourself and something that makes sense to yourself. What we're gonna do with the radishes, we'll just cut these leaves off. We're gonna use the leaf as well for a part of garnish. Radish leaf for me has got a beautiful flavor. It's, um, you know, it's great, I wouldn't really wanna see it put to waste. 
The first one, this is just kind of um, like a really basic sour pickle liquid. So it's just salt and vinegar and water. There's nothing else in there but that. So we're just gonna add these leaves to that because you don't wanna have any sweetness in there. So I just wanna have a really nice sharp flavor. So this is quite, it's, it's quite a quick pickle in here as well. We're not gonna to take too long. Why do you need the two stages of pickle? Because um, you want to achieve different flavours from them, so... Um, yeah, the other one's agridu, so it's like a French style, it's um, glucose, um, vinegar and water. So the glucose kind of adds a viscosity to it and it, it kind of breaks them down and you get the kind of this pliable pickle that you get, you know, yep. it kind of goes a little bit rubbery but crunchy at the same time, you know. Basically all we want to do is just get a nice thin slice from it, something like that. And how far in advance do you have to do this? Um, you can do this pretty much an hour in advance, and that'll be enough in there. But you do it the day before, it wouldn't really make any difference. So, all you can do is just drop those in and let the pickle work its magic. So the other one that we're going to use is a daikon radish pickle, but this one takes longer. So this one doesn't get done in the agridu, it gets done in the straight pickle. Um, but because it's it's uh, stick, you kind of you, you kind of wanted to give it a fair amount of time in there. So you can see like it, it's gone a little bit floppy, but it retains all the texture and the crunch in there. So kind of you still got that daikon radish flavor coming through in it. Yeah, it's really, really good. Right, so the next stage of the garnish that we're gonna use is these figs. So figs are in season at the moment, they're amazing. Figs are one of my favorite things to use, really versatile for savory foods. Um, there's always that Middle Eastern element with figs as well, which is something that I'm keen to use. So, right, so to cook these, these are gonna go in for about eight hours. So eight to 12 hours is ideal, um, at a temperature of 72 degrees. So this is gonna be for the pork liver parfait. So basically we're just gonna put these together. All we're going to do now is just pour into these containers and we're just going to cook them um, in a combi oven on 80% humidity at 80 degrees for around 45 minutes to an hour just until they're almost set. That's it. Right, so now that that red wine's really come down and it's pretty much all but evaporated, all we're going to do now is just add, this is some of the stock from the pork before we uh, reduce it down to make a sauce. So we're just going to add that into it now. And that again is an equal part and let that come down again. So if, it doesn't, if you're doing something it doesn't make sense, it's not true. So always be questioning what you're doing and, 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 why. and why. So ask why all the time. Don't disrespect the people that you're working for, but for your own mind, ask yourself why and, and push forward that way. On top of that, don't try to pursue success too early, you know, really take your time to look around. Right, so now that that chicken stock and everything's come down, you can see it's like a really nice, beautiful thick. The glaze super rich, like this smell it is just insane. So what we're gonna do is just drop in the thermo as well and basically just treat it exactly the same way as we did with the parfait. So it's gonna blend it really nice and smooth and then pass it through a chinois and that's all we need to do. Right, so basically what we're doing now, so we've got a really nice caramelization on the crust of that, you know, so a really nice crisp um, crackling on there. So we just want to get a really natural flavour on it while we take it through. So coals for me is the best way to achieve those sort of flavours. This is a cheese that we've made from that pig's milk that we were talking about earlier from the mother's milk. So basically what we do, we just bring it up to a temperature, about 70 degrees to pasteurise it. And then we let it cool back down to body temperature. And we add a mesophilic culture to it. So a cheese culture, which helps us set over a couple of days. How can you inspire others to enjoy great food and cooking? At the, at the expense of sounding corny, I guess my answer would be, you know, I hope I already am inspiring people. Um, I hope I hope that people are enjoying what I'm doing. I'll definitely keep trying to inspire people. I'll definitely keep trying to do that. Um, and I hope I always will. That sound better? Less corny? <laughs>